Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Southern Illinois 250-kilometer ARCA supercar race right here at the DeCoin State Fairgrounds. I'm Ray Dunlap, along with Ron Drager. And, Ron, here's your SK Tools field summary. 37 ARCA supercars on the grounds today. Starting 34th will be Darrell Basham, 33rd Mike Buckley from Ann Arbor, Michigan, 32nd John Gill, the late model veteran, and 31st from Cincinnati, Ohio, J. Paul Weber. Kurt Dickey from Windsor, Ontario will go 30th. Then it's Dennis English, Mike Fry from Bloomington in car number four, Jeff McClure from Harrisburg, North Carolina in car number 89, then Scotty Sands from Henryville, Indiana, and Roger Blackstock, a Michigan driver. He'll be driving car number 12 starting 25th today on the field. 24th starter today from East Peoria, Illinois is Todd Kuhn. 23rd from Fairfield, Illinois, David Boggs and Rick Wentz's car. 22nd starter is Bill Drake, son of Steve Drake, his first ever start. Dickie Taylor, the veteran UMP late model driver, is 21st. Bill Ventrini, a two-time series champion, will start 20th. And 19th on the grid, Jim Elliott. Rich Hayes goes 18th today with Jody Guerra from Dayton, Ohio, in car number 13. Ed Dixon making his second start with the ARCA cars in number 50. Tom Bigelow will be driving car 01 today. And in the number one Riverside Chevrolet, that's Marvin Smith. And John Wilkinson will go 13th today. He's from Hueytown, Alabama, driving the Neil Bonnet Collectibles Buick, car number 59. Twelfth starter on the grid today will be Frank Kimmel. He currently is second to the Arca Supercar Series points in Terry Shirley's machines. The eleventh starter, a nice qualifying run for Tim Porter and Mark Marshall's Chevrolet. Joe Rutman, the veteran, will start the Rulo Brothers pedigree car in 10th position. Randy Huffman, a nice qualifying run for the Maroa, Illinois driver. Dean Roper, 55 years old, will start 8th in the Mueller Brothers car. And the 7th starter today, Ken Rowley from El Paso, Illinois, and Ken Smith's Chevrolet Lumina. A nice run for him. He's been on the pole here a couple of times, so we can look for some good things today from Ken Rowley. Good to have Dean Roper back in the field today. As we look from 6th up, it's Eric Smith in the Southtown Motorsports Ford. Bob Keselowski in a Chrysler with sponsorship from Winnebago. Bobby Bowser from Springfield, Ohio. He'll be starting the Quality Farm and Fleet Ford in fourth position. Glenn Brewer, a great qualifying run today in car number 10. CSR and Lewandowski, the sponsorship there. And Bob Hill, who's been on the pole three times on the dirt in his career. Today we'll start on the outside pole. And a bit of a surprise today, Ron. Gary Bradbury from Chelsea, Alabama, currently leading the rookie points. He's on the pole today in car number 78. Gary Bradbury having a good season so far. Led quite a bit of the Springfield, Illinois race on the mild dirt. So starting on the pole, somewhat of a surprise, but not really. And there's three of the drivers, Glenn Brewer, Bobby Bowser, Gary Bradbury, ready to buckle up and start today's event. Welcome back to DeCoin, Illinois. Ray Dunlap and Ron Drager ready to start today's ARCA supercar action. On the pole today, as we said, Gary Bradbury from Chelsea, Alabama, a two-time winner in 1994 on the ARCA supercar circuit. And, Ron, this is the third trip this season for these guys to be on the one-mile dirt tracks. Springfield and DuCoin, the state fairground tracks in Illinois, traditional stops for the ARCA Supercar Series. Mix in a stop at the Indiana State Fairgrounds in, in Indianapolis. And look down to the inside there. We see guys Dyson going into that first turn. They've got to get narrowed down to one groove. Real good crowd on hand today as they're ready to watch some great racing, ARCA style, and it's underway now. The green flag has been thrown, ready to complete lap number one. We take a look up through the field there. We got a good look at Dean Roper in the number 99 making a move there, as well as Joe Rutman. Here's a couple of grizzled old veterans in today's race, Ron. You better believe that, but out front, it looks like we're going to have maybe a couple of the newer drivers to the series. Bob Hill is running in first in the white Chevy Lumina right behind Gary Bradbury. You saw Hill leading that group of cars, but they're chasing Gary Bradbury, who's pulled away a little bit. Made a real good jump on the initial start here. Bradbury has stretched it out a good bit, but the rest of these cars seem to be running in order. That's Bob Hill at number 46. Then Bobby Bowser in car number 21. Here comes Keselowski. Uh, we see Frank Kimmel back in the group there, so a lot of the regulars on the ARCA supercar circuit running up front early on in today's 250-kilometer race. We will be a bit short today as far as the total number of laps in order to get this program into a one-hour broadcast. Certainly hope you're enjoying the ARCA supercar races right here on Prime Network. Today, once again, another dirt track race. You know, Ray, this is probably, and this could be challenged, but one of the most scenic venues that we visit with the ARCA Supercar Series here at the Duke Coin State Fairgrounds. 
a lot of rolling lush country in the background. You've got uh, what looks like a, a moat that a castle should be sitting on the inside of there on the infield. They actually used to hold powerboat races on that on that waterway around the infield of the racetrack. Gary Bradbury coming out of turn four. You're right. This is a very beautiful track and a great crowd on hand watching racing today. And look at this. Gary Bradbury has about a half a straightaway lead on these other cars. He's really stretched it out there in his Buick car number 78. Chelsea, Alabama driver, a veteran of the NASCAR Slim Jim All Pro Series. He was a top five competitor over there, finished top five in the points, had a lot of top five finishes, won a race. Gary Bradbury came to the Arca Series with a good bit of experience, not necessarily on the dirt, and he's run so very well. He, he led a good bit of the race at Springfield, Illinois. Unfortunately, crashed while leading the event over there in turn three and four at Springfield, but here today up front looking good. Bob Hill runs second, then Bobby Bowser, Bob Keselowski. It looks like Glenn Brewer has moved up now to fourth. Here comes the challenge by Joe Rutman in the pedigree food for dog Chevrolet. He's on the outside there of Dean Roper, and man, when you start talking about dirt track racing, here's two guys that have an incredible amount of experience, both of them going to Victory Lane and ARCA dirt track racing, and Dean Roper, certainly no stranger to that. He's won eight of them in his career, so this is a guy that really has a good handle on racing, and this is a car, Ron, that had been uh, attempting to make the Brickyard 400 earlier this year in August, and the, the car didn't make it into the show, but today the Mueller brothers bring it out. Detail Herbicide, the sponsor on number 99. It's interesting you mentioned that. It's kind of a switchola there. Joe Rutman driving the pedigree food for dogs Chevrolet, the, the yellow Chevrolet car there, number 39. Dean Roper was in that car for the mild dirt races last year. Now Roper in the green and white car, joining back up with the car owners, Tom and Jerry Miller from Random Lake, Wisconsin. They were his car owners when he ran the USAC stock car circuit. He was a 19... Uh, 81, 82, and 83 champion of that series. So they're kind of getting back together, and Dean said we're calling ourselves over the hill game. You know, we talked about Roper's car being one of the ones that didn't make it into the Brickyard 400. Also, Joe Rutman was driving for the Rulo brothers that day as they tried to qualify over there, and they were the very last car to get knocked out of the field as A.J. Foyt put them 41st, so they didn't make it into the show. But Joe Rutman now back in the seat of number 39. He's making a challenge on Roper. Rutman, who cut his teeth in ARCA-sanctioned short track racing around the Detroit and Toledo, Detroit, Michigan, Toledo, Ohio area, won a lot of races there, then moved on to some national competition. Of course, you've seen him in some NASCAR Winston Cup races, but Joe Rutman, a real veteran, he held the track record at Springfield for six years that he set in a, in a Camaro car back in 1980. So Joe Rutman with lots of experience as well as Dean Roper, two of the drivers we've got our eyes set on. And also right behind them, car number 45 is Randy Huffman. Now here's a guy who has yet to go to victory lane in ARCA racing, but boy, is he tough on the dirt tracks. Randy Huffman is a guy who will run in the top five, finish in the top five. He'll lead races, especially on these mild dirt tracks. Randy's a very good, and he's a young guy, but he's got a lot of experience over here on these racetracks. He and his brother, Jerry Huffman, their father, Herman, a former USAC stock car driver, ran some ARCA series races there in the early to mid 80s. And uh, the guys all work at the Huffman Cabinet Shop in Moroa, Illinois. The dad and the two brothers, Randy and Jerry, and see Mike Buckley going a lap down now. That's Bob Hill in the 46 and Bobby Bowser in 21. But uh, the, the Huffman boys usually run well in the dirt. Jerry not able to compete today. His car not able to be repaired after the Springfield race, but Randy giving it a good run. Looking at your leader coming down the front straightaway there. He zips by. That's Gary Bradbury from Chelsea, Alabama. He's won two races this year, Ron, but both of those on short tracks. He won at Pensacola's Five Flag Speedway and also at Flat Rock Speedway just southwest of Detroit. So Bradbury, a two-time winner, and also other drivers who have gone to victory lane this year running in second and third. That's Bob Hill from Story City, Iowa, and Bobby Bowser. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Bob Hill. Of course, he sat on the pole and won the race at Springfield, Illinois. He picked up the Metro 25 Tire Center's bonus for winning the, both the pole and the race in the same event. And Gary Bradbury in the Red Buick's going to try to do it here today. He looks very good right now. Those three cars running second, third, and fourth, Hill, Bowser, and Keselowski, all have tasted a good bit of success on these mild dirt tracks. And they could very well be just pacing themselves and saying, we can see you. We're not letting you get that far away. We're comfortable where we're at. We just saw a glimpse of Mike Fry pulling onto pit road in car number four. Looks like motor troubles for Fry. 
We'll have to apprise you of that later on in the broadcast here, see if he's able to get back into the race, but he has gone to the pit road. And we see the hood up there on car number four. Bradbury now starting to uh, slide a little bit harder out of that turn number four, and it looks like these other drivers are starting to catch back up a little bit. The drivers will tell you that early on in the race, the track is more like the, the classic dirt track where you have a cushion and you ride the cushion and you try to drive your car that way. As the race goes on, you got 3,400 pound cars out there, 34, 36 of them, putting rubber down on the racetrack. It almost turns into a mile paved over. That surface turns in, it gets a lot of hard rubber down and it turns almost into an asphalt surface. Here comes Bob Hill putting the pressure now on Gary Bradbury. He's closed it down to about a three car length differential. Bowser just a car length behind Hill and look at this, Bob Keselowski right up there in the top four. Car number 29, Winnebago, the sponsorship. And Keselowski having what we would have to say is probably one of his most disappointing seasons ever in ARCA competition. Bob Keselowski, the 1989 ARCA Series champion, he's winless for over a full calendar year for the first time in his ARCA Supercar Series career. Bob Keselowski's bat last victory came in August of 1993 at the Springfield, Illinois track. We are now one event past that on the ARCA Supercar schedule as they see them putting a lap on Daryl Basham. And Keselowski's winless in this last calendar year. Sure be great to see Bob go to Victory Lane today because he certainly deserves it the way he's been running on the dirt tracks. He was leading at Springfield with just a couple of laps to go, ran out of fuel there, a miscalculation by the pit crew, and over when we ran on the other one-mile dirt track this year at Indianapolis at the Indiana State Fairgrounds, he was involved in a very, very hard crash uh, very late in the race. So it's been a pretty tough go in 1994 for the driver from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Bob Keselowski leads all active ARCA drivers. He's got 24 victories. He's up around the 25 mark in career Talladega pole positions earned. So Keselowski always a strong runner. He and his crew chief and his brother Ron, the car owner. Now watch Bob Hill in the 46. Going to go underneath Gary Bradbury in 78. That's a pass for your lead. Bob Hill now has taken over the lead here in the ARCA supercar race at Ducoin, Illinois. 250 kilometers the distance today, and Gary Bradbury's car is just getting very, very loose on him. You see him moving backwards now as here comes Bowser, and a motor just let go on the front straightaway. That's car number 06, which is Dennis English from Benton, Kentucky. The car of uh, Dennis English has let go of a motor, and I believe that's going to bring out the caution here at DuCoin, Illinois. So we're under caution for the first time today. We'll see if Dennis is able to get it off the back straightaway there. There's a gate on the back, and he may be able to get off. So we're going to take a short break here at DuCoin, Illinois, back with more ARCA supercar racing in just a few minutes. Don't go away, folks. More racing coming up. And welcome back to the Prime Network broadcast of ARCA Supercar Racing. Today on the One Mile Dirt Track at DuCoin, Illinois, we're ready to go back to green flag racing, and the green flag is in the air, underway once again. Up front on this mile dirt track is the Larry Clement-owned Chevrolet Lumina GM short block power deck car. A Ford Thunderbird runs second. That's Bobby Bowser at the wheel, the Jack Bowser-owned car. And a Chrysler LeBaron, a Mopar-powered car. Bob Keselowski driving that one, running first, second, and third. So there you have it. GM, Ford, Chrysler running first, second, third here on the mile dirt. In fourth position today, it's Glenn Brewer from Columbus, Georgia. A real good qualifying run for Brewer today. And here's a guy with a lot of dirt track experience. Glenn Brewer, uh, Columbus, Georgia, veteran of the late model dirt track wars down there. Glenn now making a living building cars and building motors and keeping up racing uh, equipment for drivers down there on the short tracks. But he's been a full-timer on the ARCA Supercar Series since 1990 when he won the STP Prestone ARCA Rookie of the Year Award. And and Glenn really looks forward to coming to these mild dirt tracks. He qualified extremely well here. He qualified third. He's been a pole winner at the mild dirt tracks in the past and had his best career finish second right here at Dew Point in 1992. That's Glenn Brewer in blue number 10, the CSR Lewandowski's construction Oldsmobile. Boy, anybody that's been watching these dirt track races for a few years can't forget about three years ago right here at DuCoin when Brewer was leading with just one lap to go in the race, and he also ran out of fuel. So maybe he's passed that uh, monkey on to Bob Keselowski now because Keselowski did the same thing just a few weeks ago at Springfield, Illinois, running out of fuel in the closing laps of the race. 
Right now up front, it's Bob Hill from Story City, Iowa. And Ron, boy, what a, uh, a Cinderella story this has been, really, for this driver. He came on the scene last year. His very first race was at Springfield, Illinois, where he won the pole. Bob Hill is uh, the defending series champion in the NASCAR Bush All-Star Tour, and that's a, a circuit of dirt late model races, the lighter weight uh, offset chassis dirt late model cars in the Midwest. And Bob Hill has done very well. Uh, he's been able to pick up some ground on the Kosiski brothers who race out of Omaha, Nebraska, and have kind of owned that series. And he's driving for Larry Clement, uh, who owns a Chevrolet Mack dealership over that way, and doing very well. Not only is he doing well where you would expect him to here on the mild dirt tracks, but also in his super speedway races, he's done extremely well. Run up, run up front at Daytona, run up front at Talladega. Uh, just a real good, good season for Bob Hill. A, a very, very good year for him so far. And of course, we said he went to Victory Lane at Springfield, Illinois, winning that race from the pole. And uh, Larry Clement told me, he says, I knew we were going to do it this year. I just didn't know for sure which racetrack it would be. So congratulations to those guys. And they got a strong car again today here at DuCoin, Illinois. And we have another smoker going down uh, into turn number two. That's car number 65. So some smoke coming out there for Jim Elliott. Back to the DuCoin State Fairgrounds in just a moment. Stay tuned. Well, ladies and gentlemen, when we went to break, Jim Elliott had expired the motor on his car number 65, but things got a little bit worse than that. As you can see on the back straightaway, car number 78, Gary Bradbury, as we were going to yellow, blew a tire on his uh, Buick and ended up in the wall hard. We see Frank Kimmel now coming down pit road. Tough break for Bradbury. You see the pit road is dirt. Everything's dirt here. And the crews have to adapt to the various look at the damage to Bradbury's car. Terrible. Number 78 with some severe damage. You were talking about pit road here, Ron. The crews adapt to so many different racetrack surfaces. Well, here at DuCoin, we noticed for the first time ever, some of the crews have actually put on football cleats to get better traction on this dirt pit road here at the DuCoin State Fairgrounds. A real tough break for Gary Bradbury out of the race again today here at DuCoin. So unfortunate turn of events for number 78. But we're back to green flag racing. Bob Hill continues to lead here in car number 46. Boy, look at these cars filing down into that funnel in turn number one. Indeed, they do need to funnel down. Running too wide through that turn is doable. But the guy on the outside is really, really in a hairy position when you're on the outside there. Look at Ken Rowley. Are you going to go three wide? No. Nope. Ken Rowley backs off. That's Scotty Sands and John Gill dicing there. Gill driving car number eight there. That yellow car may look familiar to many ARCA Supercar viewers as one that uh, usually is driven by Tom Bigelow. Tom Bigelow and his son, Alan Bigelow, fielding a couple of cars for this particular event. John Gill had entered into an agreement wanted to run a couple of these mild dirt track races for the Arca Supercar Series. So they gave Tom's car to John Gill. And they said, well, we really want to race too. They went and borrowed a car. As you see, a pass for the lead. Bobby Bowser passes Bob Hill for the lead. They went and borrowed a car from Bob Williams from Canfield, Ohio. So Tom Bigelow is here also. Boy, Bowser just jetted around car number 46 there. He made a real good move to get around Bob Hill. We see him uh, coming up through there is the number one car of Marvin Smith, who has moved up into third position. A number of cars have gone in for pit stops there while we were under caution when we went to commercial break there. So the, the field has jostled a little bit. We see Jody Guerra there in car number 13. J.D. Dank in the sponsorship on that Pontiac. We also saw Eric Smith. Yeah, car number nine there. A good run for Smith early on today. So there's your top five. It's Bowser, Hill, Marvin Smith, Eric Smith, and Jody Guerra. Good Smith, for no relations. No relation whatsoever. Marvin Smith, a two-time series champion. Now, Eric Smith's father, Cleve Smith, is a former ARCA driver, but no relation. Marvin Smith from the Columbus, Ohio area. Eric Smith from Bloomington, Illinois. Keeping our eye right now on car number 29, Bob Keselowski, who has dropped back in the pack a little bit here, and we're going to have to see if he can come back up through. You see some of those cars coming out of that groove in turn number two. It must be widening out back there as they go a little bit closer to the wall each time. It's also interesting to watch Marvin Smith wrestle his orange car number one Riverside Auto Parts car out of turn four. That's Jim Coyle's car, and when Marvin comes out of the fourth turn, he just lets her wiggle back and forth two or three times. 
And if you look down there at the end of turn four when we get that shot, you'll see a couple of tire tracks that go right up against the outside fence. That's Marvin Smith. <laughs> Marvin knows a different way around about every racetrack we go to. Keeping our eye right now on Glenn Brewer and Bob Keselowski. Keselowski has moved it up tight. Here comes the Winnebago Chrysler, and he's going to make a pass down the back straightaway on Brewer. So Keselowski to the inside. Brewer gives him a little bit of racing room, and Keselowski coming up through the pack here. We'll have to see if he can get back up there and become a contender and run with cars like Bob Hill and Bobby Bowser. And he's running in a good group of cars there, Randy Huff and Glenn Brewer. Those are guys that are going to be right up front as the lap wind down in this 156 lap race, 156 miles, 250K. The 91 car, you saw him drifting out and pulling back down to the bottom side is Dick Taylor, the UMP late model veteran. Dicky Taylor coming out mostly in ARCA competition just on these dirt tracks. A couple of races a year, and uh, we have a number of drivers that do that. And look at this, on pit road, here comes Bob Hill in Larry Clements, number 46, and we're under green flag racing. They're going under the hood, Ron. That's not good. Ray, they're not, they don't seem to be in a panic by any means, uh, and that's not a good sign when they're not thrashing away to jack the car up and get a tire changed. Or, uh, that, that doesn't look good at all for Bob Hill. What a season Bob Hill has had on the dirt track races, but today it looks like it may not be his day as that hood stays up on that Chevrolet Lumina. That's a race car that they had purchased from L.W. Miller. The paint scheme looks a little familiar to some of the other fans. Bobby Bowser now on the outside of Todd Kuhn in the Mid-City Truck Plaza. And you can see what we're saying. When Bobby Bowser is on the outside, he's really tiptoeing around Todd Kuhn to put a lap on him. You get in the outside groove there, and one moment you're on that asphalt-type surface, the next moment you're in, in the cushion. Bobby Bowser is certainly no stranger to dirt track racing. He's won these races. Look at this, Ron. Bobby Bowser is now on his way into pit road. The leader has given up the lead. Bob Hill has come in with a blown motor. Now Bowser will relinquish the lead, and I believe Bob Keselowski may take over the lead here. Bowser in for pit service. Look at him cleaning off the screen on the front of that car. He may be overheating. They're not going to tires. They're cleaning the windshield and cleaning the screen. He probably had an overheating problem. Now, that's something that can get serviced and get him out without going a lap down. The team did that at the Indiana State Fairgrounds and did save him a lap. Now, look at here. We've got Bill Venturini and Marvin Smith on pit road. The exact same thing. All of these teams going to the work on the front of the grill there to clean off the, the area that lets air come into the radiator. So overheating certainly probably one of the major problems that we've had over the years here at DuPoint. And part of the reason for that is this is a very different type of racing surface. The, the dirt here is very different from what we run on at Springfield, Illinois, and also at uh, Indianapolis at the Indiana State Fairground. This is a much richer and thicker dirt, and it gets clogged up easier. Remember a long time ago, uh, Bob Shack said dirt is for growing potatoes. And this would be good dirt for growing potatoes because it's a real thick, clumpy type dirt. Certainly is. Bob Keselowski now takes over the lead in the Southern Illinois 250 kilometer Arca Supercar race right here at DuCoin, Illinois. Glad to have you with us on the Prime Network. I'm Ray Dunlap along with Ron Dreger watching some good racing. And Ron, boy, we've had a lot of lead changes already in this race. This race tends to bring out the best or the worst in a lot of people. We talked about Bob Shack. He wouldn't even race on dirt. Bob Shack mounted an effort and said, I'm going to go to those dirt tracks. I'm going to conquer them. He came to DuCoin and won. So you never really know who's going to come out on top here at DuCoin. But here's a guy that we're used to seeing run up front on the mile dirt. That's Bob Keselowski. We were talking about that accident that he got in over at Indianapolis, one of the hardest hits I've seen in a long time. He was following Kenny Schrader very closely, come out of turn four. There was a car that had spun and was sitting completely sideways on the track. Schrader made a last-second move to get away from him, and Keselowski T-boned him right in the door and really, really put the hurt on one of their Chrysler race cars. Ron and Bob Keselowski, the brothers from north of Detroit, Rochester Hills, Michigan, their home. It's interesting that Ron Keselowski in the late 60s, early 70s was a NASCAR Winston Cup driver at that time called the NASCAR Grand National Division. His younger brother, Bob, was his crew chief. They kind of took a little bit of a time off and ran some short tracks and decided in the mid-1980s to really go back full-time racing, switch roles. Bob drives. Ron is a crew chief now. Taking a look at Bill Venerini coming down behind Bob Keselowski and coming out of the pits once again, it's Frank Kimmel in car 02. 
kind of get a wider shot here, Ron, a, a real pretty shot that shows the beautiful scenery here at DuPoint, Illinois, as all the cars coming down the front straightaway. We're going to try to pick up our leader here and just kind of show you the interval of how long it takes for everyone to get around the racetrack here at DuPoint, Illinois. Just around uh, less than a minute. Yeah, 34, 35, 36 seconds uh, is what we look for in Talladega Pole Award qualifying. Bowser drifts high. Dean Roper looks low. Roper takes a look to the inside of the Quality Farm and Fleet Ford. You see Bowser there kind of the back end of his car really sliding down to turn two. We'll keep our eye on him in turn four. Wow, those guys going around Daryl Basham there. And now Roper has made the move. He gets the position over Bowser. And you got to believe Bowser wants to look down to the inside of Dean Roper as they come out of turn four and back down the front stretch. Again, there's Todd Kuhn, the Illinois driver. So Dean Roper with the advantage this time by. Todd Kuhn has had a good season in 1994, coming out and racing selected events on the ARCA supercar schedule. Bobby Bowser, of course, running every event, and what an incredible points lead this driver has built up throughout the course of 94. Caution is on the speedway. Yellow flag is out. We've got trouble over there in turns one and two. It's Billy Drake, first ever ARCA supercar start, son of Steve Drake. Stay tuned. We'll be back with a little bit more from DeCoin State Fairgrounds. Welcome back to DuCoin, Illinois. While we were in break, a number of cars came into the pit area to get some service. You see the number 29 there, Bob Keselowski and the Winnebago Chrysler getting some fuel and some attention to the tires there. Kurt Dickey coming in, also Glenn Brewer, a number of drivers. There's Ed Dixon and a couple of cars coming in. Ready to go back to green flag racing right now. And Ron, here's a look at your SK Tools field summary top five. Glenn Brewer, Ed Dixon, Dean Roper, Bobby Bowser, and Bob Keselowski all running up front today and doing a good job. Ed Dixon uh, making only his second career ARCA Supercar Series start, so fine job. He's going to win the UMP National Late Model Points Championship unless he has some really bad luck late in the season here this year. DuPont Automotive finishes the sponsorship on Ed Dixon's car. And look at this, a move by Dean Roper. Roper goes to the inside to take that position away. And we've seen a number of times today, Ron, where Ed Dixon seems to get out on that outside groove. I think he hasn't quite got the handle on what these 3,400-pound cars do on these dirt tracks. Well, you, you've got to believe that they handle a good bit differently than the, uh, than the late model type, dirt late model car that he's used to driving. They're doing a good job. And, a lot of these races on these mild dirt tracks are just staying out of trouble, making laps, running the race as long as you can. Glenn Brewer has opened up a bit of a lead now over Dean Roper and, and Bobby Bowser there in third. Certainly experience can pay off for you in the course of a, a racing career, and that's what you got to do is get to in the seat and get some lap time, and Ed Dixon doing a good job of that. One of the guys with more lap time than anybody on one of these kind of racetracks is Dean Roper, and he's moved his number 99 detail herbicide car back up front. Here you see Bowser chasing down Roper, and you're right, Glenn Brewer really has stretched out a pretty nice lead. And there he is, the veteran from Columbus, Georgia. Glenn Brewer driving the car, fielded by Jan Driver. Sponsors on the car, CSR and Lewandowski Construction. We saw Bobby Bowser get just a little bit out of shape there. Dean Roper in the green and white 99, Bobby Bowser in the red and white 21, and the black car 29 is Bob Keselowski. That's second, third, and fourth. And the guy they're trying to chase down is a 1990 STP Prestone Rookie of the Year, Glenn Brewer. If the Brewer name sounds familiar to you, it may be because you know his brother Tim Brewer, who is a Winston Cup crew chief. You know, watching these cars go in and out of the turns today, it seems to me that Bowser running his car just a little bit looser. Look at that, Al. He's taking his left side tires out to the edge of the groove, and usually he likes to have that car pegged right onto the guardrail. So maybe a new type of a strategy, or maybe it's just because of this particular racetrack, but Bobby Bowser seems to me like he's running a little bit looser than normal. Well, speaking of loose, Dean Roper in the green and white car just bobbled up Bobby Bowser drove right underneath him. You talked about sitting on the guardrail on the bottom of the track. He sure did it right there. And Keselowski came right with him. They're going to pick up second and third position. Venturini also makes the move around Roper. So Roper going back about three spots right there. 
Of course, Bill Venerini is a lap down at this point in the race, but he is trying to get back up there. If he could get around these race leaders, then he could also come back around if we were to have another caution today. So one lap down is Venerini, but these two drivers are racing for position. So again, the blue car number 10, Glenn Brewer, just coming out of turn four there. He's your race leader. Bobby Bowser will run second. Right on his tail is the black 29 and Bob Keselowski. That's your top three. A lapped car then, and Dean Roper is in fourth. And now Keselowski looks to the inside of Bowser. Again, you're talking about Bowser not able to stay where he wants to, which is right down on the bottom of that guardrail, and right there it hurt him. He lost second position. Certainly a good move by Keselowski, who got inside of car number 21, picks up that position, so now he's running in second. And a little bit of a rooster tail coming off of Bowser's right rear, so you can tell that he is pushing out into a different groove than normal. Boy, the guy that looks good right now, you got to believe, is Glenn Brewer. He's picked up the lead on lap 120, and this is a 156 lap event. And right now, he looks to be in pretty good shape. Don't forget now that Glenn Brewer's best ever arc of finish happened right here at this racetrack in 1992, a second position finish. And in addition to that, this is a racetrack that he likes to lead on. He led right up through the white flag lap there three years ago. And another thing we certainly need to mention, Ron, is tomorrow's his birthday. Glenn Brewer, this is his last day to be able to say, yep, I'm 40. <laughs> Tomorrow he'll be 41. Well, we'll have a cake for him tonight after the broadcast if he's able to go to victory lane. Making another move right there on Daryl Basham, I believe. So Basham going another lap down. And this uh, car that Brewer is driving today, sponsored by Lewandowski Construction and also CSR Racing Uniforms. And uh, Brewer, one of those guys, Ron, that comes out and runs every race. And that means a lot to the ARCA Supercar Series. And this is a guy that really has to put on a lot of miles to make it to some of the tracks we race at. Now here's a guy, Ray, that uh, has run every event over the past four full seasons. He started with the first race in 1990 at Daytona, and he's made every single race, sometimes even bringing a couple of cars along. So he's got a backup car. Sometimes he's got somebody that uh, he can work a deal with and have them drive his second car. But they really put a lot of miles on their rig, towing from Columbus, Georgia, to a lot of the places that the ARCA Supercar Series runs in Michigan and Ohio and even as far west as where we went to the uh, street race in Des Moines, Iowa. A lot of miles under his belt driving the rig and also a lot under his uh, belt when he's driving the race car. And he's certainly in a good position right now. But boy, I'll tell you what, Bob Keselowski has tightened up that that uh, lead differential we had just a little bit ago. Brewer had stretched it out quite a bit. Here comes Keselowski. So Keselowski with uh, a strong car now moving up onto the tail of Glenn Brewer. Indeed, Bob Keselowski has closed that gap a good bit. I'm going to say there were a 15 car length lead. Now we're down to three, maybe make it two. Bob Keselowski moving in. These are good racetracks for Keselowski. And, and there's a guy, you know, we talk about, well, who hasn't won, who's done well. And Keselowski's really been bitten by the bad luck bug. Wouldn't be a bad thing for him. And you see him working his way around Scotty Sands in the 43 car. His father, Bobby Sands, a former ARCA driver. But Keselowski makes a move to the outside, puts him a lap down. That's kind of a tough decision right there as you're coming into turn one to decide what you're going to do, whether you back off and file in behind car number 43, or do you go to the outside and ride it right there on the rough edge. And Keselowski decided to do that. Gets around Scotty Sands, but now that enables Glenn Brewer to get away again, and they've opened that up a little bit. Brewer taking a long way out of turn four. He's also using the advantage of that widened up groove here at DuCoin, Illinois. So Glenn Brewer leads as the laps wind down here at the DuCoin State Fairgrounds. A good crowd on hand. Bob Sargent, the promoter, has got to be happy. We'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to the best of ARCA racing on the Prime Network. We've got four races remaining in the 1994 season after today's event here at the DuCoin, Illinois State Fairgrounds. And Glenn Brewer is your leader. When we went to break, we saw Bob Keselowski was racing with Brewer. Keselowski has dropped back significantly as we were under commercial there. And Bobby Bowser now has moved up to make a challenge on this driver from Columbus, Georgia. I'm Ray Dunlap, along with Ron Dreger, bringing you today's racing action. A good one today here, Ron. One mile dirt tracks are very different from the races we normally see on the ARCA Supercar schedule. And yeah, the mild dirt tracks uh, just add that extra bit of flavor to the ARCA Supercar Series schedule, running everything from 
quarter mile paved tracks up to 2.66 mile super speedways also visited mile dirt tracks here and what a show we're having now with Glenn Brewer and Bobby Bowser bobbing and weaving back and forth. Brewer wants to hang on. Bowser wants to win another race. It'll be his third of the year if he can take this one home. So we're in the closing stages of today's ARCA race. Glad you could join us here on the Prime Network. We've got three more short track races coming your way here on Prime. And then the final event of 1994 will be at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. That's an ESPN broadcast. But today's race is certainly not over as here goes Bowser to take a challenge to the outside of Glenn Brewer. The quality Farm and Fleet Ford on the outside. Inside it's Glenn Brewer and a little bit of traffic in the way there. But Brewer has a nice preferred line coming off of turn four. Bob Keselowski on pit road. He's gone a lap down now as we see your leaders there. Brewer holds the lead. Bowser runs second. And that's about every way you can try. Bowser tried him high. He tried him low. Backed up now. And he said, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Let me just ride here for a minute. But he can't ride for long. Laps are winding down. What an incredible uh, piece of misfortune for Bob Keselowski once again running up front as a contender in the race and here he went into pit road to get some attention to his Chrysler now a lap down and with just these few laps remaining I don't believe he's going to be able to get back around and make a challenge for this one. Yeah it, it'd be a minor miracle for him to come back and be able to uh, to challenge for the victory. That's him just ahead of Glenn Brewer on the racetrack. Here's the car number 10 the blue car is your leader. The 21 car runs second that's Bobby Bowser. And I think we'll see come into our screen before too long the black 29 of Bob Keselowski. He's one full lap plus almost the second lap down. He's just that much further ahead of Brewer before he goes down two laps. Boy, if he's to have any chance of getting back into this race, he cannot afford to lose another lap right here. He would have to hope for a caution and get back around to race with these guys. And man, if he drops another one right here, that'll almost take him out of contention today. Glenn Brewer doing a good job of leading in the late stages here in a 250 kilometer race. That means 156 laps on this one mile dirt track. A beautiful day today as the weather has certainly played to our favor. That is one of the things that many times when we race these uh, state fair races, it can just be dastardly hot, but today a beautiful day, and the crowd certainly enjoying this ARCA supercar race. So Keselowski, the black car, is first. He's almost two laps down. Then your leader, Glenn Brewer, in the blue car, and Bobby Bowser, who is the second-place car in the red and white number 21. And they are indeed closing in on Bob Keselowski. Now, we know now that the reason Keselowski was forced to pit, he cut a tire down, had to come in and get it changed. And it just, on a mild dirt track like this, to slow down under green, come in, service your race car with a tire change and get back out. You just can't do it without getting caught behind. We got a report from the pits that that was also the problem with Gary Bradbury. He cut his right front tire down after running over what appears to be a piece of a brake rotor. So uh, major damage to Gary Bradbury's car. This is going to be uh, take him a couple of weeks to probably repair that car because he went hard into the fence early on in today's race. A great run today by Glenn Brewer. He makes a move there on Keselowski just about to put him another lap down and he does. Brewer gets around Bob Keselowski. So the woes continue for the Rochester Hills Michigan driver now two laps down in today's race. Boy it almost looked as though Bob Keselowski just pulled up high on the racetrack and said look guys I know I'm a lap down. Laps are getting short. Uh, I'm going to be two down. Why don't you go ahead and race for the win? We'll see if Keselowski sticks his nose back up in there or if indeed he just pulled to the side and maybe he didn't. Hard to tell. That would be the right thing to do if, if he did, in fact, just pull out of the way and let these two race for it here in the closing stages. That was the gentlemanly thing to do for Keselowski, and we certainly appreciate that if that was his gesture. I think it was. I believe he just gave these guys the room to go race for the finish. And now he's going to sit back there and say, now, if there's a po possibility for me to pass and make a clean pass, I will, but I'm not going to get involved up there in the dicing and slicing that's going on for the win. It's time right now for Bobby Bowser to make his move. If he's going to make a move on Glenn Brewer, as we just have uh, a handful of laps remaining here, Bowser needs to try to put the pressure on him and get around. There he does. He comes right up on the bumper. We'll see if Bowser is able to pass him going down the back straightaway. And really no change in position there. So Brewer's car staying exceptionally strong late in the race here. 
Less than 10 laps to go now, and Bowser's going to look to the outside. He's really trying every possible route that he can. And Glenn Brewer, you got to believe, he's got that accelerator right through the firewall. He's doing everything he can to hold on. This would be Brewer's first career win in nearly 100 starts. Bowser to the outside now with those left wheels right on the groove. And look at that. That slowed him down this time. So the outside certainly not the way to go for Bobby Bowser in the middle of the turns. Maybe down the back straightaway that could work for him. But not in the middle of the turns there. They go by Scotty Sands once again on the racetrack. Brewer stays out front. Bowser running second. And this is really the race for the win. We'll keep our eye right on these two cars that are running up front. And as we pick up just a glimpse of pit road, the crew chief for Glenn Brewer is Jerry Bland. The crew chief for Bobby Bowser is his brother Gary. Nothing they can do but watch. Yeah. Boy, that's got to be the frustrating part, too. And Bowser goes up, puts oh. Oh. Glenn Brewer into the wall in turn number two. Bobby Bowser puts the back bumper of his quality farm and fleet Ford on car number 10. And Brewer has crashed with just five laps remaining today. Incredible. Welcome back to DeCoin, Illinois. The fans are on their feet now as the driver from Columbus, Georgia, Glenn Brewer, has exited his car. So, Ron, we know that he's okay, and he's walking back to the pit area. Let me tell you something. Right in front of this guy is not where you want to be. Well, whether he's okay or not, he is uh, obviously uninjured. Uh, we're going to take another look at it, and these guys are running for the, the victory. And when it comes down to it, this is what you're going to get. But got two guys running just as hard as they can down there. Now Brewer seems to drift up just a tad. Bowser sees what he thinks is a hole. He's going to go for it and right there was the, just a little bit of contact. And boom. Man does he get hard into that inside guardrail. Significant amount of damage to car number 10 with five laps remaining. Keselowski makes a last ditch move to get away from him but look at the damage to car number 10. Glenn Brewer's car on its way off the back and Ron, this means that we're going to finish this race under a green-white checkered situation. And we see Joe Wells, the competition director there, stopping Glenn Brewer to have a little chat with him. Part of the reason there is because Bobby Bowser is now on pit road. There, you see Bowser's car coming off of pit road and we're just about ready to get the green flag again. Bowser's gonna have to hurry. Bobby Bowser, being told, has had to pit for a flat tire, gives up the lead of the race. Who's the race leader? 55-year-old Dean Roper. Roper is now coming out of turn four, Ron. The green flag is about to be unfurled. It is. We're back to racing action, and Bobby Bowser's caught on the back straightaway. He had a late pit here, and I don't think he's going to be able to catch up to these guys. Well, let's not say anything before this race is over, because we've seen it all Man, already. But five. Dean Roper is your leader here now. They've taken the green. The next time by the start finish, they'll get the white, and then the checker. Dean Roper, the only car within any kind of distance that's on the lead lap. Only two cars left on the lead lap. Roper and Bobby Bowser. We saw him come off pit road. He's way behind. He's a half lap behind. Keselowski ended up being two laps down. Bob Hill, who was an early leader here, had a motor expire. Gary Bradbury cut his tire and went hard into turn number three wall. We've had it all today here at DuCoin. And look at this. Dean Roper has now taken the white flag. Detail herbicide the sponsorship on car number 99. This car fielded by the Mueller brothers and a good run for Ed Dixon. Ed Dixon will finish third if this stays the way it is in that car number 50. Dean Roper, if he can just negotiate this last corner on his way to his 10th career Arca Supercar win, the ninth on dirt, and maybe the most unexpected of his career. Unbelievable today. Glenn Brewer crashing with five laps to go after an incident with Bobby Bowser, and the winner is Dean Roper, a car that wasn't a contender much of the day, but he'll go to victory lane today, and boy, the fans got their money's worth. Tenth career win for Dean Roper, and just an incredible finish today here at DuCoin, Illinois. Roper now on his way down to victory lane. Dean Roper becomes the second oldest driver in Arkansas history to win a race. Iggy Katona won at age 56 in 1974 at Daytona. So Dean Roper wins one for the older crowd. <laughs> Unbelievable turn of events as we close it out today here at DuCoin, Illinois, taking a look at your SK Tools field summary. Mike Fry, J. Paul Weber, Dennis English, and David Boggs 
there on the tail end of the race today. Boggs will finish 31st in car number 76 today as we see the detail herbicide car down in Victory Lane. 25th, Tim Porter, 26th, Gary Bradbury, 27th, Tom Bigelow, 28th, Jim Elliott, 29th, Jeff McClure, and 30th, John Wilkinson. McClure and Wilkinson, top 10 point runners in the ARCA series, as is Gary Bradbury. Tough day for points for those guys. They're chasing every race. Absolutely. That will certainly shake up the points a little bit here. As we look from 24th up, we see Mike Buckley, Rich Hayes, who spun earlier in the race, car number 47, finishes 23rd. Then it's Dick Taylor, the pedigree food for dog Chevrolet with motor trouble for Joe Rutman. Then Bob Hill, who also lost a motor, and the same problem for Jody Guerra in car number 13. So a lot of attrition due to problems with motors today. Looking the rest of the way up to field 18th is Ken Rowley, who had a good strong run until his problems. Daryl Basham stayed out there all day long, gets 17th. Bill Venturini still running at the finish in 16th. A lot of trouble for him today. Roger Blackstock, 10th in points, 15th in the race today. 14th will go to Scotty Sands and a real disappointing 13th for Glenn Brewer. 12th is John Gill in car number 8. Good run for them. Bill Drake. In his very first start, car number 88 finishes 11th. Good run for Todd Kuhn. There we see Kurt Dickey from Canada. Eric Smith in car number 9. And no relation, Marvin Smith finishes 7th. Top six finishers, Terry Shirley's car, Frank Kimmel at the wheel. Keselowski comes back for 5th. Randy Huffman, we said he'd have a good day, and he did. He finishes 4th. Ed Dixon, second career start, finishes 3rd. Bowser is 2nd, and here's your winner, Dean Roper. A promotional consideration paid for by Excel Ignition Products. Accelerate your racing with Axel. Transportation provided by Winnebago Motor.